This is a game of war. The bullets are real. Make a mistake and you're dead wrong. The Army calls it basic training. It is, in fact, a time of trial, a time to separate the men from the boys. they say is a machine. The induction process moves with production line precision. The gentlemen are here to take a mental test. This has determined what you are best qualified to do once you are inducted into the service. A uh, score that you attain on this test will follow you throughout your military career. Are there any questions? From fathers and uncles, they have heard the legend, if you can walk, you can march. Yet for every hundred accepted, 45 are rejected. Production line ends here, in a private room. Your nose of throat trouble? Uh, the nose was, uh, had a deviated septum. When you have it? Uh, September of 1962. How do you feel, General? Fine. Pretty good? Pretty good. All right. We're glad to have you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel that good. <laughs> You're about to be inducted into the armed forces of the United States. You will take one step forward as your name is called, and such step will constitute your... The average age is 23. The youngest is 19. They come from city and farm, slum and mansion. And, almost to a man, they would rather be somewhere else. Yet, they are here. All right, now covering the army men's drama, cover down one behind the other, straight down behind each other. Soldiers now in nothing but name, they await their transformation. Swiftly and efficiently, it begins. Within 72 hours, the process will be complete. When he leaves here, each man will at least resemble a soldier. He will be clothed and tested and interviewed. Each man's personal history will be recorded, his hobbies classified, his educational level determined. He will be reduced to a number, then elevated to a name. Five, six, six, nine, two, one, one, eight is your identification number. You are single, no fire service. Part of each man's basic issue is a quarter of a pound of paper, his 201 personal records file. The last entry at the reception station is made here, at classification and assignment. In terms of business management, the Army is a paradox. First it hires a man, then it finds out what he is best qualified to do. But at the beginning, each man has an opportunity to influence the course of his military career. Okay, Farrell. I see your Oxford County score is 123. 115 is passing, so you are eligible mentally to apply for Oxford County School. Thomas J. Farrell, 21, civilian occupation student. Would you like to apply for Oxford County School? No, I wouldn't. It's hurt! Take your seat, men. Men, it's with a great deal of pleasure that I have an opportunity to officially welcome you to B-4-3. 
The company where you're going to be taking your eight weeks of basic combat training. A winner never quits, and a quitter never wins. First Lieutenant Randy Peeler is 27 years old. He's airborne qualified and a graduate of the Army's rigorous Ranger School. Like almost every man in the company, he was drafted. On your feet! Sergeant Cruz? Take the charge to go. Okay, let's go, everybody up! Get up, get up, get up! Let's go, get up, get up! With those lights, come on your feet, hit the floor! Week one, day six. 0500 hours, 5 o'clock in the morning. What you're about to see is part of the actual day-by-day -day process that will transform these young men into soldiers. You will see it happen exactly as it happened. Nothing has been changed, nothing has been added. For the next eight weeks, this barracks will be home for 48 men, the third platoon of Company B. 4th Battalion, 3rd Brigade, U.S. Army Training Center, Fort Ord, California. Okay, let's go. you got about two minutes. Two minutes. In the five days they've been in the company, they've been issued rifles and field equipment and have received instruction ranging from military courtesy and first aid to the care and maintenance of personal belongings. I'll be glad when this is over. Every Saturday for the next eight weeks, there will be an inspection. This will be their first one. Three, good! Is your footlocker here? The clothing looks pretty good. Do you have a Bible? Yes, sir. Are you religious? Yes, sir. All right, hey! ladder is one event of the physical combat proficiency test. Minimum requirement, 36 rungs in 60 seconds. Move out, move, move, move. Come on. It's 20 yards out and 20 yards back, and 36 seconds to do it. Drill Sergeant Jerry Crowder doesn't expect anyone to pass these tests, not the first time. For him, they are a way of finding out who needs his help the most. Crowder is 28 years old. He is an expert infantryman with 10 years service. He likes his job. The mile run ends the test series. It foreshadows what the next seven weeks will demand. For some, the run proves their ability to endure. For others, it underscores their need. For Tom Bright, it ends his brief career as temporary sergeant. Week one is over. Week three, day two, 0800 hours. Five steps to the left. Spread your feet a couple of distance apart. Now duck to your knees. The M14 is a 7.62 millimeter magazine-fed, gas-operated, air-cooled, semi-automatic shoulder weapon. It takes a little time to get used to it. For nine days, Company B will all but take up residence on the rifle range. Eight hours a day, every day, will be spent with the weapon in their hand. Ready. Ready. Power line is ready. Main target. Real senior position. In the ten days of training, each man must master this, the basic tool of the infantry. Drill Sergeant Crowder can help, but in the end, each man must win his own lonely duel with the target. Maximum score is 84. The minimum accepted, 30. Each day on the range ends the way it began. 
with a long walk. It's five miles back to the barracks. Time allotted, 45 minutes. By the end of the third week, the daily run has become a challenge. For each man, it is a chance to prove he is as good as the next man. The run is also an object lesson in teamwork. For those who choose not to maintain the pace, Drill Sergeant Crowder has little patience. You're a team, you're not an individual. One man on a team falls out, then the entire team ineffective. Get up there, formation, right? Forward! Some men, like Joe Hudson, are slow to develop physical endurance. Lacking in muscle, they draw strength from pride. you can make it out there, there shouldn't be any doubt in your mind. You better get in your mind, you're going to get yourself in shape. Because you've got just about five rough weeks coming up. Five of the roughest weeks. And you're not going to make it if you don't do it. You better get out here on your own at night and run up down this street three or four times. You better start building that wind up. Because like I told you before, we're a team. We're not individuals anymore. We're a team. Self-confidence is a byproduct of basic training. It takes a lot of it to learn how to kill a man. That's two tries for bayonet fighters. The quick in the air. Which are you? The quick. Korean campaign. The prisoner of war was told that the, now let me quote again. Week five, day three, 0930 hours. In small units of squad or platoon size, the men of Company B receive instruction in subjects ranging from military justice to what to do if you become a prisoner of war. The display of apparent friendship caught some American prisoners off guard, and many never recovered. They did not know the Written tests determine the effectiveness of instruction. Sample question. Any commanding officer is authorized to impose non-judicial punishment under Choose One, Summary Court Martial, Article 15 under the Uniform Code of Military Justice, Special Court Martial, or Company SOP. Sorry, group. Head, cut. Graded exercises in the manual of arms are conducted by each drill sergeant. For most men in the 3rd Platoon, the proficiency tests provide an opportunity to prove to Sergeant Crowder that they have listened well. Inspection. Huh. Over to your left hand to get the balance of the weapon. Entire group. Port. Huh. Port up. Report to Major Commanding Officer. Seven off reports as ordered, sir. There you are. It seems so simple, the act of saluting. So unimportant. Yet through this simple ritual of military discipline, each man learns a respect for authority and, perhaps, an understanding of it. For each man one day may be called upon to lead other men. And it is a truism of military history that to command, one must first learn to obey. Commander of the relief, post number five. Joe Hudson is 21 years old. When he was inducted, he weighed 176 unevenly distributed pounds. He has lost 28 of them. 
A veteran of five weeks, Joe has so far met every demand the Army has set for him. Now, he must pass a test of his own choosing. <laughs> This is the confidence course. No one is ordered to attempt these obstacles. Each man is free to accept or refuse the challenge they offer. Some men ignore them. But for a man of pride, there can be but one choice. To try. First time. Let's go! Make it! You got it, Joe! Kick off the side pole. Would you believe? Me three times. A quitter never wins, Lieutenant Peeler said. And a winner never quits. Joe Hudson is ready now to put the slogan to the test. Climbing a ladder, walking a beam, and sliding down a rope may not seem like much of an accomplishment. But for Joe Hudson, it marks a day that would otherwise be known only as day two, week six. Week seven, day two, 1430 hours. This is the closest thing to real training ever gets. Live ammunition, five-man fire teams, and a pockmarked hill deep within the military reservation. Close combat, they call it. For the men of the 3rd Platoon, it's an afternoon in the sun. Cocky and confident, they think of themselves as battle-hardened veterans. was when a run like this would leave the men of the 3rd platoon exhausted. Now it's a way to work up an appetite. For two nights and three days during the seventh week, there's a camp out called a bivouac. The food's hot and there's plenty of it. What? Well, you can just pour it on. Both Dick Callies and Gary Steelberg have discovered the two-way magic of army food. Callies has gained eight pounds. Gary lost ten. Are we going to move out of here? Ed Hendrickson and Jim Hawk are a study in contrasts. Ed is a high school dropout. Trap. This is the last night of bivouac. All that remains is the gentle walk that will take them back to the barracks in the morning. Week seven, day four, 0800 hours. Breakfast was served at 0530. Sunrise was 0618. Field equipment was packed and checked at 0745. Missing, three field jackets, four protective masks, and two mess kits. Not a bad record for veterans. To Tom Bright, basic is compressed into seven weeks, the experiences of a lifetime. He rose to leadership, was defeated, yet remained to learn and mature. From the raw material of youth, Drill Sergeant Jerry Crowder has begun the process that may shape them into men. It began in fear, graduated to respect, and perhaps may end in friendship. No matter how it ends, however, one thing is certain. They will never forget it.
Let me see. Check it before they put it back in the weapon. After 44 days, Sergeant Crowder's job is almost done. It will end as it began, here on the dusty ground of physical training area number one. No man can graduate from basic training without meeting the minimum requirements of the physical combat proficiency test. Any man who fails will be given one additional chance the following day. If he fails then, he will be recycled and must undergo additional training until he can. On this field on the afternoon of day six, week one, the men of the third platoon found out what the army expected of them. The expectation must now be fulfilled. Maximum score is 100. Ed Hendrickson made 70. This one's easy. Bright picks up a few extra points. Gary Steelberg is averaging 80 points in a bench, more than enough to pass. Tom Farrell scores the minimum. We have to pick up points on the next event. The enemy is time. The distance is only 40 yards. But for a maximum score, it's got to be done in 23 seconds. Come on, Farrell. To pass, you must do it in 36 seconds. The mile run is the wind-up, the last chance to meet the minimum, 300 points or be recycled. Each man, however, has kept his own tally. Tom Bright, 307. Dick Callies, 456. Gary Steelberg, 464. Bobby Hubbard, 472. Joe Hudson, 303. Jim Hawk, 410. Tom Farrell, 317. Ed Hendrickson, without a smile for the first time, scored 327. They all made it. <laughs> Day four, week eight. I have assignment instructions. The speaker is Company B's top sergeant, Armand Beatty. I will call off the names, and I will call off the MOS that you're going to be trained in, or if you're going to OJT on the job training. To keep me from having to stand here and tell each and every one of you what the MOS means, you can go up yourself and look on the board, find that MOS, and you can see what that training is. Right, MOS 91E1. Kelly's. Here, Sergeant. OJT, MOS 51D2. Farrell. Here. OJT, MOS 70A1. Popcorn. I got a supply. How did I get it? Yes. Amazing. Ooh, I don't have to worry. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah, my phone. How are you doing? I'm going to be a dental specialist in Fort Riley, Kansas. What I'll be is something like a, a company clerk. But that's on the job training. I don't have to go through any AIT. These were actual assignments. 48 men in the 3rd platoon, 41 will be in combat support. 7 in combat arms. In their Class A dress uniforms for the first time, the men of the 3rd platoon abandon the barracks. This is the last time they will march together. No longer will the platoon be a team. Today is graduation day. Day five, 
week eight. slogans and time-honored cliches. And perhaps the saddest one is this. Transfers cancel friendships until the next post do we meet. In a typical basic training unit like Company B, about half the men will go to advanced individual training in armor, artillery, engineering, infantry, or signal corps. And many will end up in combat arms units in Vietnam or elsewhere. For every man in combat, however, there are seven men who back him up in supply, transport, medical aid, food, and equipment. Those are the odds. About one man in every eight will serve in the combat arms, and it's the man at the front, ultimately, who gets the job done. just seen was a true story. Eight weeks in the lives of 48 new soldiers and the men who trained them. For Lieutenant Randy Peeler and Drill Sergeant Jerry Crowder, there will be other cycles, other young men. For the moment, however, duty hours are over. Today is Friday, September 23rd. again. Yeah. 